Prius today, all right? All right, so here we go. When the engineers first looked into designing the fourth generation Prius, they wanted to make sure that the next Prius was not just an expected improvement on our hybrid, but that it was much more revolutionary from its predecessor. But the real story about this vehicle is going to come when you guys get behind the wheel today. I'm just going to give you some additional information as you see fit. All right, so here we have the third generation Prius. It was perfect for what we needed it to do. It got you from point A to B, has excellent fuel economy, and the ride is pretty comfortable. So as we say goodbye to the third generation Prius, let me hear everyone say, ooh. ooh. Yeah, we're going to morph into the fourth generation Prius. Say, ah. Yeah, pretty nice, right? All right, so let's take some looks at the current generation Prius versus the next generation Prius. Immediately you can see that it's much more high-tech looking. It has a lower center of gravity height, so the roof is actually a little lower, the front cowl is lower, the spoiler is lower as well. So that roof height is lower by 0.8 inches. And a fun fact about the Toyota emblem on the next generation Prius it's at the same height from the ground as our sister's sports coupe, the Scion FRS. Taking oh, nice, I like it. All right, taking a look at the side of the vehicle, much more defined character lines. The vehicle is 2.4 inches longer than the previous generation. And it has some real iconic lights. All of the lighting is LED, except for the turn signal. So definitely check out the lights when you guys are out there today. And on the rear, you can see it has more of a trapezoid look, so it has a wide, bold stance, well-planted tires, and also it is 0.6 inches wider than the previous generation. Okay, let's take a quick look inside. All right, here you have up top the current generation, below is the next generation. The best way I can describe this when I look at it is, I loved my Atari when I first got it, but the PlayStation was so much better out, right? So the current generation is perfect for what we needed it to be in 2010, but now we have a much more wrapping dash, a much more high-tech looking interior, and the engineers also eliminated some of that excess volume that we didn't need in the door trim, in some of the A-pillar sections, as well as in some of the uh, panels that you'll see where your legs would be located. Okay, let's zoom in to the center meter. You can see up top, the previous design was much more monochromatic, so nothing really stands out, and it doesn't look extremely high-tech. But now we have a much more high-tech looking dual 4.2 MID displays, and now things are going to be highlighted so that your eye can actually more quickly go to the information that you might be needing. All right, let's go into the drive dynamics. As Cooper mentioned, this is our first TNGA platform vehicle, Toyota New Global Architecture Platform. And what this means really is that our engineers are going to be able to focus on a single vehicle platform quality design, and that's going to allow us to repurpose our investments to the advancement of technologies for mass-produced vehicles like Toyota Safety Sense, which we'll talk a little bit more about today. Talking about the body structure of the vehicle, we have made a lot of improvements to the structure and rigidity of this vehicle. As a matter of fact, we have some chassis assembly techniques that are quite often used on some popular models in the Lexus family, like the LS and the LFA, which are going to be models you'll probably never hear again in another Prius presentation. But I bring it up because now we have a 60% increase in torsional rigidity on the fourth generation Prius. Again, we have some other reinforcements, again, for improved rigidity for the structure. We have some front cowls, and so it's kind of like a ring structure that's going to help it be a little more rigid and stiff in driving, which ultimately means better handling and better stability. Again, you're going to see that same structure on the roof area, and again in the door area. Another good thing about having the circular structure in the door areas, it's good for energy management if an impact were to occur. Okay, moving into noise, vibration, and harshness, the designers didn't want to overlook this. They really wanted a vehicle that was almost to EV levels, an electric vehicle level, even though it is a hybrid. So when you guys are driving today, definitely note the quietness of the interior cabin. So previously, the floor structure was much more segmented, and what we've done now is we have a larger and continuous floor silencer, so you're going to notice that we really optimize the internal quietness of the cabin. We also have another array of soundproofing materials in the headliner. We also have a highly sound insulating windshield. We've also added some material in the rear cabin of the vehicle. 
Additionally, for aerodynamics, we have an underbody cover that's going to cover components under the car that would cause drag when the, move, when the air moves past under the vehicle. So that's going to aid in aerodynamics. We also have an active grill shutter that is also going to aid in aerodynamics. When the grill shutter automatically closes, that's going to allow the air to flow around the vehicle. Additionally, when it's closed, that means that the engine is going to be able to warm up a little faster upon a cold start. And this means that our vehicle has the lowest coefficient drag of any mass-produced vehicle, 0.24, and previously the coefficient drag was 0.25. All right, let's talk about some hybrid technology. There currently is not a consistent way for manufacturers to determine the net horsepower of hybrid vehicles, so we're going to be adopting the Japanese Automotive Research Institute's methodology, or the JARI methodology, for net horsepower. Previously, under previous calculations, our net horsepower was 134. Under this new calculation, it's 121. When you guys drive the vehicles today, though, I don't think you'll even be thinking about these numbers because when you get out there, you're going to see that the enhanced electric power gave us a little more um, throttle in low speed conditions. So looking forward to seeing what you think because you're going to drive the current generation as well as the next generation. And you'll really get a chance to see how we've improved the dynamic performing handling of this vehicle. Additionally, I want to talk about fuel economy. That's naturally very important in a hybrid. So that we're estimating that the MPG on the majority of the models will be 54 in the city, 50 on the highway, 52 combined. But our Prius 2 Eco will have an improved efficiency even over those at 58 in the city, 53 on the highway, and 56 combined. And that is the most fuel efficient vehicle without a plug today. So you might be asking, well, why does the Prius 2 have a better fuel economy than the other models? Mainly it's because there is a different tire pressure in the Prius 2 versus the Prius 2 Eco. So the Prius 2 Eco has a little bit higher tire pressure on the front tires and the rear tires versus the Prius 2. Additionally, the Prius 2 will be the only vehicle in this model lineup to have a nickel metal hydride battery. The Prius 2 Eco will have a lithium ion battery, which is lighter than the nickel metal half drive. And also, the Prius 2 Eco is the lightest of curb weights of all the models in the family. There are six models in the next generation Prius. So you're going to have a Prius 2, Prius 2 Eco, Prius 3, a Prius 3 Touring, a Prius 4, and a Prius 4 Touring. <laughs>